Hello everybody. Welcome back to the channel. This is Michael KE4EST. And today I have a this is a Heath Kit VTVM. Yep, another VTVM. I wasn't planning on doing another VTVM so quickly, but I got talking to this guy on the uh, internet. He had this model here and was having issues with it and he says he goes through and fixes something. He leaves up. He's got several different ones. He enjoys sitting around. Just like you do probably if you're watching this channel. And, you know, working on this old stuff and restoring it and getting it going and all that stuff. But he was in there uh, asking some questions on the forum and uh, having some issues. And what was funny was he... the problem with this was I've not took it open, opened it yet or nothing I just got it in and this is the way I got it um, so I've not done anything with it yet but he says the it looks like the zero set might be off a little bit is there a crack nope not a crack it's just the way it's made he says the ohm he said everything works but the ohm scale he says AC works DC with DC plus and minus if he goes to ohms, he can't get it to work. No matter what he puts across it, what resistor he puts across or anything, it'll come down real low. So, let's see. I just looked up the schematic for it. This, this might be it. Let's see. Yeah, I guess that is it. I thought maybe there's another page to it. No, this is a schematic right here. So, you can see how simple it is. Um, you know, the way it was then. This was a Heath kit designed for a kit. It wasn't designed, you know, it says Heath kit precision on top of it, but wouldn't necessarily design, you know, for a laboratory and, you know, a big high dollar place. You know, it's a kit you could buy and put together and have at home. I'm not sure, you know, what he's done to it, what's, you know, been, you know, when it was put together as a kit, maybe something got missed, uh, you know, it could be different things, but he said he went through, I think, changed some parts in it, I don't remember what all he said he changed, but he went through it some, but he just couldn't get that part to work, so I'm not going to plug it in, uh, I'm pretty sure he's probably, you would think it's got, you know, it's to the point where it can be plugged in, but just in case I found the right screwdriver here and I'm going to take it apart here oh, that screw is loose there when you're doing this be careful not to especially with these slotted screws you know flathead whatever you want to call them it's easy to go in there and you know and hit the case I don't really want to do it and of course this case ain't immaculate shape but it's easy you know you'll be doing it and scratch the case you know so you don't want to do that Especially if you want to try to restore something to keep it, you know, and the shelf queen or something. Um, and you don't plan on repainting it or anything. You just want to leave the patina that's on it and leave the shape that it's in like this because, you know, it's got age. It's, it's, you know, personality. But you don't want to add a bunch of extra scratches to it. I'm not sure what that there is. Some kind of dirt or something. Anyway, two screws in the back, so I'll always take these things apart. So I'll slide this out. Looks like it's had set in some rust there. Maybe it had some water setting in it on that part of it for a while. Let me get this out of here. I do remember him saying he cleaned it pots really good and all that. And yeah, I can see he's been in here. Whoop. He's replaced this uh, the capacitor here, which is, let's see, on this one it says 16 microfarads, 150 volts on the schematic. He's put in a brand I've never heard of. And he's went 15 microfarads, 450 volts, so that's good. And he's got I'm sure it been right. Yeah. He's 
got it installed correctly. So let's see here. Looks like he's, yeah, that's new. Replace that. Capacitors or the resistors are um, so far. Yeah, Alan Bradley style. And there's the two tubes. One, two tubes. All right, so I suppose we could plug this thing in. Our problem most likely would be in here if uh, either something's in the wrong spot or that's in wrong. I wonder if that's on the schematic like that. Let's see, can you see that? I'm just kind of looking at it. See this right here? Two precision resistors there. That's where you're going to see it. There we go. I just twist it together there and put it across. I don't know if the schematic calls for that or, or if, you know, the assembly manual it said to do that or not. But He's got a new C battery in here, looks like. Um, so, yeah, maybe we can fire this thing up. Let me, let me, let me, let me find some leads here. Be right back. All right, I can found some leads here. These, there's a guy on eBay that makes these up, or you can, I think some of them get just the pieces and a little bit cheaper to put together yourself, or you can uh, buy them pre-made. I think it's uh, KK4HXJ. Um, look him up. If you're interested, a lot of this older stuff, you know, not just Heathkit, but Ico and Heathkit and different brands. Uh, he makes up a test leads. If you can't find any of the ones you got, it's just gone. And he does really good. I bought from him several times. It uses high voltage wire and all that stuff. But anyway, do that there. This is DC probe and this of course is common and this is our AC and ohms the way they did it then you know someone's got them some meters back then you could flip a switch you know you can do different things but this is the way this one is here so I'm going to I've got this plugged in over here to the isolation transformer and all that Let's see, I want that to fall over on me and me reach and grab it. Maybe it'll be all right, it's not too bad. Maybe we're off, let's turn it on. I mean, if you do anything like this, based on the case off like this, be extremely careful when you're doing so much on risk. There's high voltage in there. Let's see what happens. Well, you can see we got a that lit up. Where are we at? Ohms. Let's just come over here. Let's see, yeah, here we go. I'm on DC minus. Well, now that here, like I said, zero set might be off a little bit, but we won't worry about it right now. Our zero's working. So, let's see. Clip these together. Yeah, it's gonna stay. And we're on DC. Whoop, on DC minus DC plus. Let's do that again. Okay. And put it on 15 volts. I've got a 9 volt battery, which I don't know how strong it is. But let's see what it does. So if this is working, it should be right around in here somewhere. Wow, that <laughs> either this meter's really off that battery's that dead. Okay. Yeah, the kids they'll throw stuff up here on the workbench all the time. I need you to fix this or check this for me. Uh let's see here. Well 
it's working over here. Let's use a power supply. Turn it on. And we are in the low range. And there's about 10 volts. About 10 volts, thereabouts. Let's see what it says. Mm, it's still low, ain't it? That's, that is not good. So we got more than one problem here. That's not good. Let me just do one double check. Check this on another meter here. Okay, it's reading about eight and a half volts, 8.3 volts. So it is a little bit weak, but it ain't that weak. Of course, this may need a calibration but it should be closer to nine. So it's got more than one problem. All right, let's see. I've got resistors laying all over the bench here. And I don't have my glasses. Let's see. 6.8K. Let's put it on ohms. You see that? It looks like it's sticking. Oh, maybe it ain't. Alright, let's go to infinity here. Let's see if it's going to zero on ohms. Well, bring it to zero. Set that again. Zero, okay. Let's see here. Let's go times 1,000. Okay. This, where'd my resistor go? 6.8K. Uh huh. He told me that no matter what you test, it goes to zero. Times a hundred thousand. Times one meg. It should just barely move. Well, okay. Yeah. Well, that is interesting. But it looks like it's not got more than one problem. Let's try something. Let's go DC minus. And we're still on 15 volts. Let's just I don't find the right thing. Let's took it up backwards. I have to bag it backwards so we don't mess the meter up. A little less than five and a half volts still, no matter what. So Yep, it's got a problem. So let's shut it off. Shut it off over there. Unplug it. Let everything discharge. Alrighty. Well, that's what we got here. I'm going to make this a two part episode and go through. I'll do a little bit off camera and then we'll. It may just be the calibration, you know, on the DC part. And I'll do some visual inspection of this, go over everything really good, and look at the schematic. Then, when I come up with something, we will... There's another resistor that's been changed right there. That is not period right there. Um, but I'll go through and see what I can find on it. When I find something, I'll come back in part two, and get this thing going because there's not, um, not a whole lot to the circuit so 
We'll make it work one way or the other, you know, and I'm not even check the tubes. Could have a tube problem, it's weak, could have, you know. Um, but right in here is probably where our problem lies. But anyway, thanks for watching. Until the next one, this is Michael, KE4EST73.